or a place that give you joy like nowhere else. And then you started to think where or where, which way I can get this joy. And you heard of a place somewhere in nice, very nice, uh, far from your, where you live. And they told you if you go, leave everything and live there, you will experience a joy like nowhere else you can experience. And believing in this, you started to sell your house, to leave your job, to wrap up, wrap up everything, and you start to move to this place. And when you get there, you started to feel, wow, this is really a wonderful place. It's even much more joyful and nice than what they describe me. And I wish, you know, like I have discovered this place earlier in my life. Well, this is, you know, in, uh, in our dreams. <laughs> there is no place on earth that ca can have a place of joy incomprehensible in this earth. There is only one place which is heaven. But we can have this feeling of joy that nowhere we can feel or think of when we taste the happiness and joy of bringing back a soul to God. And this is the topic that I was asked to talk about today, the joy of soul winning, of winning souls to the Lord. The Lord is always waiting for those souls, and He tried to reach them by all means. He liked to see us holy as He is holy. He said, be holy as I am holy. St. Paul said in the first epistle to the Corinthians, he said, For you were brought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So glorifying God is something that not only brings joy to God, but brings joy to you yourself. And glorifying God is something that you can do by doing good deeds, by helping people in need, by doing a service to the Lord, by living a godly life. And this is great, as I said. It's a joy that you taste, but again, it's a joy that can be fulfilled and felt more strongly if you bring a soul back to the Lord. St. Saint Saint James the Apostle said in his epistle, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So bringing a soul back will benefit this soul greatly will save the soul from death and not the physical death is meant here it is the spiritual death the eternal death and will cover a multitude of sin you know when we pray the thanksgiving prayer we say eh, we thank you lord for you have covered us helped us protected us so covering us is covering our sins god is always shadow our sins he doesn't want our sins to be revealed to everybody around us. He is so wonderful that he wants this to be something only him know about because he can bear us, he can forgive us, he can lovely, you know, give us a chance after a chance and accept us as a heavenly father. The soul winner experiences great gladness in his own heart. As again, it is something that the Lord himself talked about in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15. He said, I say to you that 
likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. And guess what? This joy is not only in heaven. It's a joy that is shared between heaven and earth. Because we are one body, the body of Christ, some of it on earth and some of it in heaven. And Christ is the head. So when the heaven rejoice, of course, the whole body of Christ rejoice, which is us who are still here because we are one church. So winning souls bring back joy to every human being who really love God and love to see this soul coming back to the Lord. The book of Daniel in the Old Testament tell us about the great reward in heaven for those who win souls. In Daniel chapter 12 it says those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So if you turn a sinful soul back to righteousness, to repentance, you will like be like stars forever. You know, stars, not a star like nowadays star. It's a star that is glorified by God himself. It's a spiritual star. It's a star like Saint Mary, like Saint Demiana, like Saint George, like Saint Antonius. This is what meant by star. And winning souls is really something that we learned from the Lord himself when he was serving here on earth. And the Lord, when he was winning the souls, he was truly knowing how to win the souls. So he will interact and get to everybody with the way he can win them wisely and in a separate, special way. Like for example, when he went to, to talk to uh, uh, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was, you know, a tax collector. He was well known between everybody around him that he's a thief, that he was not honest in doing his job. Everybody hated him, but he was dealing with him so nicely. When he was following the crowd and he saw him on the sycamore tree, he didn't, you know, like over, you know, pass him, but he stopped, especially to talk to him. And then not only that, he sp talked to him away from the, the crowd that was around him, but he told him, you know, guess what? I want to come and visit you tonight in your house. And people were, you know, you know, complaining. How this, you know, thief who was hated by the society, you know, the Lord visit him. But uh, he was so loving and so wise in winning those souls. The sinful woman who was caught in the act, and she was, you know, according to the law of Moses, deserving to be stoned. They brought her to him. And he stood there and he started telling them, any one of you who is without sin, let him first stone her. And this was a very simple way of giving both a lesson, the people who were judging her and the woman herself. The woman started to feel that, who is that who saved my life? I want to offer him my life. I want this new life that I want to offer to him to be a new life. A life that is different from the sinful way I was living before. And then those who are judging her, he won them by, a, by this. Maybe we thought about those words, maybe they are kind of harsh, but they were like a wake-up call to them. That a wake up to yourself. If you are really think about yourself that you are uh, the righteous one, well... No one is pure and without sin, only God. So go watch yourself uh, before you judge this poor woman. The last example is for the Samaritan woman. She was really, you know, judged and hated by her society. And the proof of that, that she went to collect the water from the well in the middle of the day, at noon. And, you know, it was so hot to, to go and carry the, 
the, the pot and the go back at the middle of the day was mainly to, uh, to avoid people because mm -hmm. you know that nobody likes her. And he was there at this time because he wanted to convey the, the message for her that I'm here for you. I'm here specially for you because you are special and I am dealing with you respectfully, not like others who are yani, boycotting you and dealing with you disrespectfully. And that's how he showed her even that he is in need for her service, that she can provide water for him. And that's how he started to even praise her. He didn't look down to her like her sinful way and sinful life, but he started to put aside all of this dark side of her and look at the only good things that she is a honest. When she, he asked her, she was honestly answering that he is, you know, what kind of life that she was living. And that's how he won her. He uh, converted her to be a preacher. And not only that, her whole city came because of the witness that she was witnessing. <laughs> Uh, for God and for uh, how, love he, how loving he was to her. This is the examples of winning the souls. And this is the joy that we experience when we win the souls. And every one of us got put in our way souls. That you get the chance to experience the joy if you help in winning them. If you, you know, ask God to give you the word and the way to win them. And God will work with you and through you to win them. And at the end, you will experience this joy that is like incomprehensible and no joy like it. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.